Hi everyone, my name is Brooke Rothstein. I'm a current Tufts medical student and future Tufts med uh, dermatology resident. I'm presenting today the results of an investigator-initiated proof-of-concept study performed at Tufts Medical Center Thank you. <laughs> in the Department of Dermatology. The study was conducted from January to August 2016 with Dr. David Rosemarin serving as the principal investigator. I have no conflicts of interest to disclose. So we performed an open-label clinical trial evaluating twice-daily use of topical ruxolitinib 1.5% cream in 12 patients with vitiligo over 20 weeks. The topical formulation was chosen given that vitiligo pathology is superficial in nature, and the topical application was presumed to limit side effects known with systemic use. We screened 12 patients, 11 were enrolled, and 9 completed the study. Repigmentation was measured using the Vitiligo Area Scoring Index, or VASI, tool. Figure 1 shows the mean percent improvement in VASI scoring from baseline through week 20 in all enrolled patients. The red line represents facial VASI in patients with greater than 0.5% VSA affecting the face at baseline. The blue line represents total VASI in all applied areas, including the head and neck, trunk, extremities, and acral surfaces. And the green line represents acral VASI scoring. The most dramatic response was seen on the face, where an almost 80% improvement in VASI scoring was observed after 20 weeks. A less impressive, though still statistically significant, response was seen in overall VASI of approximately 23% after the 20 weeks of the study. There was only a slight response on acral surfaces in one patient um, that occurred at 20 weeks. And this is consistent with other existing therapies for vitiligo, which are more effective on the face and less effective on acral surfaces. Figure 2 shows the photographic improvement in subjects with greater than 0.5% BSA facial vitiligo, which was four study, patients in our study at baseline. Subject 5 had complete depigmentation at the start of the study um, on the lower half of her face, and by week 20, she had almost completely repigmented. Subject 11, similarly, had 90% depigmentation on the lower half of his face, and he had actually failed a clinical trial of abatacept for vitiligo prior to starting our study. He had some speckled repigmentation at week 8, and by week 20, had um, almost uh, significant and almost complete repigmentation on the lower half of his cheeks. Subject 3 was our first subject to respond. Uh, he showed response at approximately four weeks. You can see here at week eight, he has some erythema on his neck, and this was a common adverse event experienced in many of our patients. You can also see a hyperpigmented rim surrounding the patch on his, of vitiligo on his right cheek. Nine of our patients experienced this adverse event, but we believe that it may serve as a signal for impending response. And subject six was a patient who had approximately 60% body surface area involvement at baseline, um, and she still had significant facial response. So most of these patients had long-term histories of vitiligo ranging from three to 18 years and had failed other standard and experimental therapies for vitiligo but responded to topical ruxolitinib twice daily treatment. Ultimately, our study showed that topical JAK inhibition may be a promising new treatment for vitiligo. These results have been used to inform a multi-centered clinical trial of topical ruxolitinib for vitiligo that is currently recruiting for patients 12 and older. Thank you.